Here we are, 100 Days in Calamity, a mod that adds some basic music, a whole new bunch of items, new bosses, and completely adds a whole new section to the game. I'll be playing in Revenge's mode, which makes bosses a lot more difficult. This is my first time ever experiencing something like this, so even though I'm a veteran to Terraria, I might not be the best. If you have any advice, please leave it down in the comments. I'll try to fight every single new Calamity boss, but for this first 100 days, I decided to focus a bit more on building. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. After creating a world in expert mode because there is no master mode, the first thing I did was open the starter bag. It gave me some tools and potions to help speed up the start of the game. Then I activated revenge mode, which adds two new mechanics, the rage meter and the adrenaline meter. These meters are to help you deal more damage in combat. Afterwards, I got to chopping wood. As I made my way through the desert, I realized I could cut down cactuses the old way, meaning some old things I knew about the game might still work here. From a wolf from a gyrator ball that honestly scared me, I got a metal scrap and a battery, which increased minion damage by 7%. After making some armor and exploring a bit of the right side of the world, I explored the left side. In a chest, I found a spear, which came in really handy in dealing with those wolf from orb and help with zombies. At night, to avoid dealing with mobs, I head to a cave where I found my first heart crystal and an angry dog. And I did not want to find out what that thing did. It looked mean. At spawn, I made a base with two rooms for the merchant and the guide. I'm not sure what other starter NPCs Calamity might add, but I want some NPCs to move in early while I'm exploring the caves. While at a nearby cave, a fish attacked me, which caught me completely off guard. They usually just walk around when it rains, but this one was wearing armor and did damage to me. I was not expecting that. Inside a chest, I found a mana of regeneration, which is useful as to not need to build campfires every time I need to heal early on. I also found a few more heart crystals and got an accessory called Mana Jelly from a jellyfish. It didn't do much except give me plus 20 mana. Afterwards, I drank a Spelunker Potion and got to mining. With the use of the Spelunker Potion, I got an enchanted bow and an extractinator. And then, I accidentally blew myself up. Well, at the base, I bought a piggy bank and a sickle and returned to mining. Inside a mushroom chest, I got a fungal symbiote, which buffs my melee attacks by 15% and also makes my melee weapons leave some sort of mushroom trail. And after mining for a bit, I head back home and upgraded my pickaxe, but decided to continue exploring the overworld to see if Calamity had any new biomes or something else for me to find. And then my fighting proficiency leveled up, a new mechanic added in Calamity, and basically makes it so the more you do of a specific action, the better you get at it. Eventually, I came across the Crimson Biome, which had an unusual layout. I'm not sure if that's because of Calamity or Weird World Generation. Eventually, I ran into the Jungle Biome and then the ocean, and ran back home because a shark attacked me. As I was making my way through the Snow Biome to collect wood to work on the base, I got some sort of shield accessory from one of the droids. It gives me 10 extra defense, but only for a short period of time. It's not consistent, so it won't be very reliable, but it's better than nothing for now. Let's not wait too many days to begin working on the base. And for some reason, blocks wouldn't swap when I tried placing them. That's weird, maybe my Terraria was broken. I'm joking, I know this version of Terraria doesn't have journey sand features. It's going to be annoying when I try to build without those features. I worked on the start of the base until day 4, then I ran out of bricks, so I decided to get to mining. But before I went, I upgraded my sword and now to work on a elevator. As I was mining, I reached a bit of a predicament since there was an underground snow biome, which made me not be able to last at all in water. In Calamity, being in the snow biome greatly reduces the amount of time you can last underwater, which was a problem because of how full my elevator was of water. While trying to find bombs to clear the water, I found another golden chest. But most importantly, I got some chandeliers to hang in the base, and also got some life crystals. In my explorations, I found some weird biome, or area new to me, and I wanted to see what it was about. Apparently, it was some kind of laboratory, with some sort of gun shooting at me, but that didn't stop me because I really wanted the chest. Inside the lab, I found some kind of core, and a weird projecting hologram robot talking about needing some sort of ID and something about plasma, and then I stole them. I also found a study on aquatic life. It talked about some creatures in this new biome I had found myself in. It's genuinely really cool to find this kind of lore in game. 
Using the gravitation potions I got from the lab, I head to the skies to find Sky Islands. Right above spawn, I found a sky island with a red balloon. Then I found a bunch of little meatball islands. Which surprisingly actually had chests in the middle. At least some of them. The biggest meatball island only had copper ore in it. Then I found some sort of lab island, but then died to fall damage as I arrived, since I forgot that was a thing. Luckily, I had another potion, and I really wanted to explore to see what the deal was with that island. And it's actually terrifying seeing a giant red eyeball on the minimap. I stole quite a lot from that lab, including potions, planter boxes, circuitry, and platings. After talking with the guide, I learned that the plating and circuitry is used for hard mode, so I'll just save it for now. Using bombs, I finally managed to get rid of the water and my elevator, and ended up finding another weird alien lab base. After reaching lava, I head back home, because I remember something I used to do before Journey's End came out, and it involves fishing in the ocean. But before that, I finally made a pocket watch. I also made a weapon called the Crystalline, but got a debuff on it. But I couldn't do much about it, since I can't reforge and don't have enough materials to make another. But I'm sure it won't be a problem. And after making the weapon, we ran into King Slime. King Slime seemed fairly simple. All that changed was that he teleported more frequently, while taking less time to teleport. While below 50% health, King Slime also summoned a crown jewel, which did not take any damage and followed me, shooting projectiles. Other than that, King Slime was still fairly the same, chasing the player and dealing contact damage, while summoning slimes. As it turned out, the debuff on my weapon was a very big problem, because that little debuff ended up causing me the fight I had with King Slime. Or maybe I just wasn't well enough prepared. As I was making my way to the ocean, collecting worms along the way, I accidentally summoned the most terrifying boss I've ever seen. There was no way I was beating that thing, so I left. The traveling merchant arrived, so I at least got a cool cape. Before Journey's End, there was a strategy in Terraria, one of getting a special pickaxe you can only fish from the ocean. It's called the Reaver Shark. It also helps that as you fish, you get crates to save for when you enter hard mode. I tried doing this in the first 100 days video, without knowing it was already nerfed. Once I arrived in the ocean, after reluctantly waking up the angler, I got to fishing. And guess what? It wasn't nerfed. The river pickaxe. It still had 100% pickaxe power. In Journey's End, this was changed to 59%, but it originally had 100% pickaxe power essentially skipping every single pre-hard mode pickaxe upgrade needed. After fishing and getting quite a lot of loot, I head back home. Here's everything I got, in case you want to see. It's time to make some real progress, and for that, we head to hell, with my new pickaxe and my still wooden armor. Once I arrived in hell, all the water that was barely moving suddenly appeared to flood hell. Using the obsidian skin potion was a bit more complicated, since in Calamity, it acted more like a lava charm. While I was mining, my minion did quite a lot of bit of work without me realizing. With the hellstone ore, I upgraded my armor and my minion, and while speaking to the guide, I learned about a weapon called the Biome Blade, which seems incredibly strong for how simple it was to collect everything needed to create it. I already had 20 dirt and ice just waiting for me in the chest. I didn't have any sand, but that's no problem. I also needed 20 of any evil block, 20 mushroom, 20 coral, and 20 marble. I could get everything pretty easily if I didn't drown, but the biggest issue might be getting granite. I couldn't stay mining though because I felt an evil presence, meaning the Eye of Cthulhu has arrived. The Eye of Cthulhu was somewhat more different in Revengeance mode. For starters, the health of the eye was increased. The Eye of Cthulhu also charges way more in Phase 1, while entering Phase 2 a lot sooner, at 75% health instead of 50. His minions no longer drop any health, and the eye deals a lot more contact damage.
I got some new drops from the fight. The Shield of Cthulhu and a Scarf. I wasn't too aware I could use a Scarf by itself, so for now, I was only using the Shield. I also got another special item, which was my night vision, but decreases my vision during the day. On day 11, I managed to get the marble I needed, and head to the jungle to find granite. In the jungle, I got quite a bit of loot, found the granite biome, and then returned to my house stone. And now, we have the biome blade. But before we defeat any more bosses, let's work on the base. Using one of my many favorite combinations, bricks and boreal wood. I'll spend some time working here. Building without any features from Journey's End was more of an inconvenience than I thought. That it feels weird to build without them. The tools for measuring and block swapping had been so ingrained into my head. By the end of day 12, I kind of had an idea of what the final version of the base would look like. But I wasn't too sure how big it would actually seem. Especially compared to how open the base from Master Mode was. It's still day 12 because of my Terraria crash. Fortunately, not much progress was lost. Once again, before the end of the day, I had made pretty good progress. I even managed to make a roof I was very happy with. By day 13, the outline of a normal looking house was done. It's weird seeing a normal house, but I want to try to build a very different base each 100 days. On day 14, I wanted to see if I could get the Storm Lion Mandible to summon a desert boss. We're going to need sand and mandibles, the Storm Lion one, and some cactus. Surprisingly, normal mandibles were the hardest material to obtain. And after making an arena and defeating some enemies that came out of nowhere, I got to fighting the Desert Scourge. The Desert Scourge is a giant worm, intended to be fought before the Eye of Cthulhu and after King Slime. But our fight with King Slime didn't go too well. The Desert Scourge behaves much like a regular worm, moving through blocks trying to ram the player. The Desert Scourge will occasionally also burrow underground, then proceed to lunge at the player, somewhat like the mechanical worm. In Revengeance mode, the Desert Scourge slightly increases in size and has a few more segments. It will also spawn alongside two smaller Desert Scourges. This boss caught me completely off guard. It was massive. I was expecting it to be something like the Eater of Worlds, but this seemed even bigger. I also didn't expect it to drop fishing equipment. After defeating the Desert Scourge, I drank a teleportation potion and ended up in some sort of toxic wasteland, the Sulphur Sea it's called, a new calamity biome that replaces the ocean by the dungeon. An event called the Acid Rain was in progress. I decided to stay and see what it was all about. The Acid Rain is a weather event, which causes some acid themed enemies to attack. After spending most of day 15 dealing with the rain, it seemed like all it did was clear the rain and didn't spawn a world ending boss, which was a shame. I spent the rest of day 15 organizing, but paused to build an arena in the dungeon and try fighting Skeletron. I quickly noticed that Skeletron had much more defense while he still had his hands around it. But without movement speed from any type of boots, I wasn't going to be able to dodge any attack. So I teleported home and continued organizing. On day 16, I was finally done organizing. But since we are lacking resources and we need Hermes boots, I head down to explore the caves. As I was making my painfully slow way to the jungle, I accidentally teleported back home. Actually, forget what I was doing, because since I had gotten an x called the Seashell, I can move through water pretty fast. So I head to the caves to explore that sunken cave biome. While I was there, I got to stealing Sea Prism. I don't know what it does, but it seems important. On day 17, I got to stealing Navy Plate, which also seemed important. And then got into a fight with a giant clam, which I could not find anywhere. So I left, but I ended up running into another one. The giant clam is a fairly simple mini boss. It's just a giant clam. It's initially passive and stays close until you hit it enough times, which is how most things usually work. It summons clams while teleporting and trying to crush the player. Here's some of the things I got. Back at the base, I placed some of those alien machines and bought the ammo box from the traveling merchant. There was also a horse mermaid fish person, but never mind them. I got to extractinating the Dradeon power cells because I desperately needed gold ore. But it turns out the power cells don't give any ore. But I had silk blocks, so I still got the gold. And then a piggy showed up to the house. It was very cute and I did not want to kill him. So meet Matthias the pig. And after exploring a little of what Calamity had to offer, I got back to work. Turns out I didn't need gold because there's no gold in my world. It was platinum. 
I had gotten so used to always getting gold in every single world I play in that I completely forgot platinum was a thing and not just a coin. While working in an arena in the mushroom biome, I got a giant shell. It provides extra defense, but it makes me 15% slower. But I did bring sunflowers, so we're fine. But with this boss, I'd really much rather have the movement speed. Crabulon is a... What, what, what is that thing? Crabulon is a mushroom crab, I, I think. Crabulon walks around chasing the player while firing mushroom projectiles. While below 66% of health, it shoots more mushrooms, which move faster and also increases the amount of times Crabulon can jump. While below 33% health, Crabulon shoots even more projectiles, which are even faster while also jumping even more often. From Crabulon, I got the Crabulon, the Fungal Clump, which is some sort of mushroom stand, the Fungicide, and the Mushroom Plasma Root, which increases raid damage by 15% permanently. I spent most of day 19 trying to find Hermes Boots, which I did. Afterwards, I prepared to fight Skeletron. In Calamity, Skeletron's hands are a lot more aggressive, while the head has an increased defense of 250 per hand. The head also deals a lot more contact damage. Skeletron also had a new ability, which made the fight a lot more interesting, a teleporting ability. Which, after understanding the pattern, didn't seem too troubling. If anything, tedious. After dealing with the hands again, the fight got even more intense. Skeletron got faster and even managed to throw me off the arena, putting me in a terrible position against the teleporting ability. I tried to run back, but Skeletron teleported in front of me and blocked my path. It seemed like I was going to lose the fight, but luckily I managed to use the hook and barely managed to return to the arena. It was a close call, but right before 4am, I managed to defeat Skeletron. From the bag, I got the mask and useless bone glove. The Skeletron, but most importantly, we have access to the dungeon. On day 20, I rescued the mechanic. I also got an ancient ship and a new skeleton minion, which is actually really cute and funny to look at walk. While working on the base, I realized I completely skipped a part of the game, a part which I don't usually skip at all. It just had completely slipped my mind. I made my way to the Crimson Corruption biome and began working on an arena to fight the Brain of Cthulhu. I don't remember fighting this boss in any of my 100 days videos. Maybe I did in the original, but let me refresh your memory. The Brain of Cthulhu is a giant brain that mostly hovers summoning creepers that will protect it until it opens itself once all the other creepers are defeated. In Revengeance, the Brain of Cthulhu deals 22% more contact damage and the creepers also deal more. The brain will teleport more often as more creepers are defeated. When at low health, the Brain of Cthulhu will, will periodically fly in loops before dashing at the player. From the Brain of Cthulhu, I got the Brain of Cthulhu, which allows teleportation at the cost of confusion. The Crimson, which disables perforator cyst bonds, which I needed, and the treasure bag that had the Brain of Confusion. Back at the base, the Dryad sold the Worm Scarf, which there was no way I wasn't going to buy, although it only reduced damage taken by 10%. Also, a meteor landed, but I wanted to make my base look somewhat nicer. On day 21, a goblin army showed up. The goblin army is an event where you defeat enemies until the meter at the bottom is full, like the acid rain event. There didn't seem to be much more different with these guys, but they did drop new items, like the warblade and the plasma rod. I wasn't too focused on the event though, because I was thinking about what I should build the arena out of. 
I decided to go with wood once more, and to copy the design I created in master mode because of how efficient it was. It's not going to be an exact one by one replica, but it will be very similar. I spent all the way until day 26 working on the arena, the base, and flattening some land. I should probably explain the design of the arena, at least the middle area. I tried to make it so it's pretty much impossible for most creatures that can't fly or face through blocks to make their way in, at least in regular Terraria. I'm not sure if some calamity enemies could make their way in, maybe by jumping. I just wanted to make it as hard as possible to kill the nurse. I was finally done building the arena, but I still needed campfires, heart lanterns, and honey, but it's mostly done. On day 26, I did some final touches and did some mining. This time, I began working on an arena in the jungle to prepare for hard mode, and while I was there, I rescued the goblin tinker. I wanted to make an arena now, because in hard mode, so many strong enemies spawn in the jungle. But also, in Calamity, Life Root, Plantero Bulbs, and the Temple is available as soon as hard mode starts. At the base, I learned a lot about my accessories, like that I didn't need the shield with a counter scarf. Although, while making my way back to the jungle, I ran into a cyst. On day 27, I decided to try fighting the perforator. The fight was a lot to process. I really wanted to focus on taking out the flying boss, but I wasn't aware that I couldn't even damage it whilst the perforators were alive. That's no problem, I learned what I needed to do, so I expanded the arena in the crimson biome and then I returned to work on the jungle arena. I also prepared some areas where life root and platero bulbs could grow. On day 28, I was still working on expanding the life root and platero bulb area, until I wasn't. I spent all of day 28 fighting Queen Bee. She seemed a lot stronger than I expected. Queen Bee is a bee queen. Her attacks were similar to regular Queen Bee, except a lot more brutal. Shooting a lot more projectiles and summoning larger bees. It felt like her charges were faster, but I wasn't entirely sure. I don't know if she has more health, or maybe I used the wrong weapon, but that fight took way longer than I expected. I was also very close when she only had 83 hit points left. After doing some more reforging for defense and getting really really fast mandible claws, it turned out it was just the weapon I was using. I thought the piercing effect would be useful, but it was painfully slow. I will say, Queen Bee is a lot tougher in Calamity than I expected. From Queen Bee, I got the Queen Bee, which doesn't seem to have any negative effect. Uh, aside from taking a slot in your inventory, and only having a small effect I didn't even want to keep on me. I also got the beekeeper, the hardened honeycomb, and the high pack. On day 29 there was a party, but no party girl, so no cake. Or maybe that's a journey sand update, I don't remember. I should build another house, but I wanted to build with dynasty wood. Unfortunately, there's a chance I might not even get any, so it's just a matter of waiting. The traveling merchant did arrive, but didn't have what I wanted. But because there was a party, he did have a party hat. I did not know that was a thing. I know how simple the house looks, so I wanted to experiment with my building style some more. As well as start building another house, because I need some NPCs to move in, like the weapons dealer. In my opinion, this style with more going on in the background looked a lot more interesting than just two block combinations. I'm still figuring it out though, so bear with me. I worked at a new house until the morning of day 31. I think it's fine to pause building for now and hope the gun stealer moves in. 
In the meanwhile, I head to the dungeon to look for a bewitching table, the alchemy station, and to hopefully get a shadow key. I managed to find the shadow key and then got some sort of weird station I couldn't move. It must be used for later on in the game, so I'll move on for now. I thought Calamity had removed the alchemy station, but then I found it. And since I can't buy the illegal gun parts, until nighttime, I had to hell to open some chests. At least I tried to. Back at the base, I finally got the illegal gun parts from the gun dealer to make the pumpler. I also got some cool rainbow die. It was my new weapon, the pumpler, which fires like a minigun, but also shoots exploding pumpkins. I fought the perforator once more. This boss may be a bit complicated to explain, so I'll try to keep it simple. The perforator is a group of bosses, which consists of three worms and a fleshy brain looking hive. The main hive will hover above the player, shooting falling projectiles and occasionally charging at the player. The small perforator spawns when the hive reaches 70% health. It's a smaller worm and much faster than the next two to follow. The medium perforator spawns when the hive reaches 40% health. It behaves much like the Eater of Worlds, splitting off when a body segment is killed. And finally, the large perforator, that spawns when the hive reaches 10% health. It's very similar to the Desert Scourge, borrowing on the ground and charging at the player. From the perforator, I got the perforator, which causes projectiles to inflict Icor debuffs on enemies. And from the treasure bag, I got quite a lot of weapons. The saucer maker is a melee weapon that shoots homing projectiles on hit. A yo-yo called Aorta, which does the exact same. A minion that looked exactly like the tooth boss. The bloodbath, which summons raining blood. And an accessory called the worm tooth, which increased damage reduction. Later that same day, I head to hell to find shadow chests. There weren't as many as in regular Terraria, but when I found one, I got a weapon which did 99 damage. At the end of the world, I found another laboratory, and as I was trying to figure out how to enter, the wall of flesh appeared. I think a demon I defeated had dropped a voodoo doll into lava, but I was not prepared. With no arena, no water walking potion, and 3 HP, I had to leave. Which may have not been the best idea, but I wasn't going to survive, and this way, I at least get to keep my gold. On day 33, I head to the toxic wasteland to summon an acid rain. One of the last things to do before we enter hard mode is finally explore what's under this biome. Using bombs, I collected a lot of surfaceous sand and caught a magic spear that shoots leeches. Also, the traveling merchant arrived. The traveling merchant had everything I wanted and more, including the wood and some shield called the frost barrier. It seemed somewhat useful, so I bought it. I also bought a rotten brain from the dryad, since I saw I could make an amalgamated brain with the brain of confusion. I also made the meteor fist I really wanted to try out. I also also wanted to explore a bit of the sulfuric ocean before I died, but a massive aquatic scourge stopped me. Lesson learned. Before the end of the day, I head to the ocean to kill some sea urchins to get the spines they dropped. Until I exploded from a tiny shrimp. I was really enjoying using the meteor fist, especially because of how much light it gives when it explodes. 
Really deep down, in the longest shrine I've seen, I found an enchanted sword. Which isn't as strong as my biome blade, but it's calamity. I might be able to make something with it. While farming for sea urchins, I got a depth crusher, which does a lot of damage, but apparently it's just a hammer. With my new armor, I think I could finally explore this toxic ocean. It also granted me a lot of other buffs, like being able to poison enemies, getting an additional jump, doing increased rogue damage, but we mostly need it for the ability to explore the sulfuric sea. It doesn't completely negate the poison or whatever it is that it's hurting me, but it does make it take longer to damage me. But then I reached another biome, one in which I wasn't taking any damage. Maybe I didn't need the armor after all. I'm not entirely sure how it works yet. There was a lot for me to find down here, like a weapon called Lionfish that shot poison balls of some kind and dealt over 100 damage when combined with my armor, iron boots to fall faster in water, abyssal treasure which I'll open later on, torrential tears which summons the rain which sounds very ominous even though it's just actual rain. I returned to the base and got to opening the treasure I had found. I spent the rest of day 35 preparing hell for the wall of flesh fight. Apparently I completely skipped a new boss in Calamity, the Slime God. The Slime God consists of two slimes and a core that flies around. The Ebonian and Crimulan slimes will jump at the player, occasionally flying over, attempting to drop down and land on top of you. They release mines that really make for an inconvenience when fighting them. When they reach half health, they split into smaller, weaker slimes that continue to attack. You need to be very aware of your surroundings, while also trying to avoid the slime core. After defeating the slime gods, the core will accelerate, and begins teleporting all over the place. Because the slime gods don't really teleport like the king slime does, or shake off any items on top of them, the lionfish really helped me out during this fight. From the slime god, I got quite a lot. The eldritch tome, which casts damage in tentacles, the crim slime staff, and the coral slime staff, which both just summon a slime minion, the slime god, which turns you into slime, and the electrolyte gel pack, which increases adrenaline damage by 15% and the reduction by 5. I also got the mana polarizer, which allows me to regenerate health. At least that's what it seemed like, but I don't really understand the description. Before we fight the wall of flesh, there's some unfinished business we have. The base. Last 100 days master mode, I had a terrible awful time building in hard mode because of the wyverns. So this time I decided to build a bit before entering hard mode. I spent all the way until day 44 working on a base. I honestly think the only reason I took so long was because I was trying to come up with a new design for a main base. And even still, it's pretty simple and I might not even use it, although it's far from done so it's hard to say. But I already spent more than enough days working on it. And some items I need to decorate were found in hard mode. And for the one next to it, well that one will be occasionally adding floors, just for fun. I wasn't going to make something too big, in fact I wasn't really making it for the wall of flesh, since you can avoid lava by just using a water walking potion. And after a bit of reforging we had almost 50 defense. As I was making my way to the end of hell and hopefully waiting for my house to regen, a mob decided to spawn the wall of flesh for me. And it went about as well as you expect. And now I have to wait until the next day, I might as well use this time to expand the arena so that doesn't happen again. And so, here's where the first major struggle of Calamity came in. So far, I haven't really struggled with bosses too much. It's only taken me 2 or 3 tries to defeat most bosses so far. But here, 
It took quite a few days, so enjoy my struggle of trying to figure out a way to defeat the Wall of Flesh. My first real Wall of Flesh fight did not go well at all. The Wall of Flesh shot incredibly dangerous lasers that completely destroyed me. It's maybe time to upgrade my Biome Blade. There's two swords I have in mind, so I'll figure out which one's better. After mining in hell for hellstone and collecting heart crystals and jungle spores, I made the bloody edge. I had a chance to pick between the bloody edge or the knight's edge, but it is a new weapon so why not try it. I also killed king slime for the solidifier to make the static refiner and made the geletic blade which shoots a powerful beam that can pierce through enemies. I tried using the mana polarizer with the crown jewel, but honestly my current accessories provide a way better defense. In this point of me struggling what to use, I learned about a powerful accessory called the Lathanum. It turns debuffs into bobs and provides incredibly strong benefits. For example, Blackout gives plus 30 defense and plus 25 damage. The only problem is that it only has a 1.7 chance for me to get it from any treasure bag. The thing is, we got it first try. So after trying to fight the Wall of Flesh and failing once more, I think I was going at this the wrong way. Instead of focusing on my damage output, I should have been focusing on dodging the lasers. I was used to being under a huge time pressure, but this time I decided to spend until day 51 mining for iron for buckets. Although I could just not defeat the wall of flesh, each new try I seemed to be doing worse than the last. So on day 52, I decided to fight the slime gods one more time, mining hellstone and made statigo armor and the gubo. And the same for day 53. After making Skyline Wings and killing the Slime God two more times, my Terraria crashed. I think we're still on day 53, but I had to kill the Slime Gods once more. On day 54, I placed walls in the arena to see if that would help stop the lasers, which have really been a nuisance for the last days. And finally, on day 55, we fought the Wall of Flesh once more. The Calamity Wall of Flesh. Oh boy, where do I begin? It's hard to explain how this boss patterns have changed, since all it does is move towards you. Except in Calamity, the Wall of Flesh has increased health, and the wall also moves faster. And as some of you may have already noticed, shoots very strong lasers. When at 50% of its health, it uses death lasers, and the hungry and the leech health is increased. And they also do more damage, because why not? The wall will also charge faster towards the player if they move too far away. The Wall of Flesh is also the hardest boss I've fought in Calamity yet, having taken me the longest so far. But finally, the quest to defeat the Wall of Flesh was over. From the goodie bag, I got the Breaker Blade, which does over 100 damage. The Demon Heart, the Summoner Emblem, which increases minion damage by 15%, the Hermit's Box of 100 Medicines, which allows me to respawn with full health after death, the Black Hawk Remote, which spawns a Black Jet Hawk to fight for me, the Wall of Flesh, which increases item pickup range, and the Underworld, to prevent demons from dropping Voodoo Dolls. Back at the base, everyone was alerted and had something to tell me, but it's mostly just hard mode unlocks that every NPC gets, nothing important. The first thing I did was collect Pearlstone Tan on my way to smash demon altars. A Crimson Mimic also appeared, and I decided to take the challenge, but I didn't do enough damage to even be close. In the Crimson Biome, I smashed 3 altars, stole a Crimson Effigy, and the Steampunker arrived. It said she had awoken, which I don't really understand what it means, it makes her sound like she's a boss. For some reason, she just decided to spawn below my arena. And since apparently I hadn't made one before, I made the grand design and placed teleporters. If the Wall of Flesh fight taught me anything, it's that in this mod, I am very weak. So we're going to need upgrades, and fast. And for once, I actually had a plan. For the first step, we head to the Crimson to collect Icor. We're going to need to make some flasks. Also helps to get Souls of Night while I'm here. Step 2, we head to the jungle to collect jungle spores once more. We're going to need the blade of grass again. Also helps that we get a few life fruit, but I'm not going to collect too many. Step 3, find where I put the stingers. Uh, 
Step 4. Collect stingers and accidentally summon two queen bees. I found the stingers and then the two queen bees found me. Ugh. Step 5. With the blade of grass, lava, and deathweed made the caustic edge. But we're not done just yet. Step 6. Make some flasks of icor and poison and get the true caustic edge. That should be a good enough weapon for now. It's now time to mine. I saw that I could make the cobalt shield using any type of cobalt, which reminded me I have crates to open. From the crates, I got a few titanium, adamantite, and palladium. I decided to work on the base. We are very behind our builds. Let's begin by removing the ground below our weird little town with TNT. Afterwards, I terraformed the blocks below the houses to make them look like islands. And now for the area below. I got to removing background and then after finishing and having a big open space, I decided to also mine out the area below the first space I made. To make the area look like it's not just floating, I began placing grass walls. It was a very slow process. And when I ran out of grass walls, the dryad was slain. Well, time to place all the water now. This was taking way too long. Already a day and not much progress. So while the hollow spreads and the trees grow, I got to mining orichokium ore. I was having a hard time telling where to find it at first, since with the spelunker potion, it just looked like palladium. But now with the upgraded pickaxe, we can finally mine titanium. And we're going to need a lot of titanium, as much as we can get. While mining, I collected crystal shards and a few souls of light. On day 64, I got a beam sword, which would have been great if I didn't already have a weapon that did way more damage. I also ran back home because I was burning alive. Since we're here, I turned the titanium more into a furnace and then we only made 24 titanium bars. Not even close to the amount we need. Right at the start of day 65, I made the evasion scarf, which is just a straight buff to my current scarf. Well, there goes all my gold, and I didn't even get a good reforge. I needed a total of 46 titanium and 3 frost cores. I had 45 titanium already, I just needed the core and exactly one more titanium bar. And for the core, we need ice golems. Although our snow biome was corrupted, and I wasn't sure of whether they could spawn there or not. But while I was in a snow biome, I ran into a new biome. In this biome, there was something called Astral Ore, and a weird machine tree looking thing. I'm going to assume this is the Astral Biome, based on pure context clues. So I built a house for the Steampunker to buy green solution to clean the snow biome, but I don't have enough to buy a contaminator. Although there was no need for that, because ice golems can still spawn. I managed to get all 3 frost cores in just a few in-game hours. And after getting the last titanium I needed, I actually decided to make titanium armor instead of frost armor. I felt like the extra defense would be better than just a damage buff, although I still need to mine more titanium. And so I mined all the way until day 67, and finally made a full set of titanium armor. I also made the amalgamated brain for an extra 13% damage. I head to the jungle to get spores once again, got some clouds, and made the anklet of wind and an anklet to upgrade my boots to lightning boots. I head to the skies once more to try and get souls of flight from wyverns and got attacked by a UFO. I couldn't find any wyverns and they used to be really common so I just left. I'll be fine with my current wings for now. Before the end of day 67, I began working on an arena in the snow and astral infection biome. I made two cryo keys and then head back because we all know I'm not going to beat this thing first try. This should hopefully be a good enough arena. The cryogen is a giant chunk of ice. The fight was a lot like a bullet hell, with many phases and a way to create some sort of barrier I needed to destroy each time to be able to damage it. It mainly just consists of making the player dodge all sorts of ice shards and then the player attacking it when it shield is down. The fight went okay-ish. I should have taken it more seriously and not traded my health for damage. But instead of challenging the boss once more, I got to flattening land to grow pumpkins. And then I made my way to the jungle to try and get my health up to its max. But I decided to stay for a bit longer and got the giant tortoise shell accessory. And made a really quick house for the witch doctor. And then I got to collecting life fruits. And then the queen bee showed up. What are you doing here? I don't get why she's so aggressive. Afterwards, I got to farming souls of light. And then on day 71, defeated two hollow mimics. I also got an enchanted apple, so now I have my own unicorn. While farming, I also had an absolute anger buff, or debuff. I'm not too sure what it does. 
And after killing another Mimic, I got the Storm Bow. The reason I have been farming for a while. Good thing too, because I was starting to not get as many souls. While working and opening the arena more, I ran into a giant astral enemy, who I was having fun, because they kept knocking me really far back. And I found it really funny. Well, now I've gone overboard. And made the arena a bit too big. And this boss will get enraged when I'm not in the snow biome. So I'm going to have to play snow to make sure that doesn't happen. I call this cube the big snow. The big snow is here to help me stay inside the snow biome. After farming some horns and fairy dust to make a few holy arrows, it was time to fight the cryogen. After the fight, an old frostman came out from the boss. What? He is friendly and even sells me items. Back at the base, I got to working on the new base. I've said back at the base so much. I got to placing dirt and working on mining the area below. Because it felt too closed. Back at the base. Because there was no other way for me to get this. At least not in this version of Terraria. I had to go into another world and get the wood wand, the leaf wand, and the living loom to craft wood related furniture. I also forgot to open the treasure bag, so I did it now. From the treasure bag, I got the soul of cryogen, an upgrade to my terrible wings, the glazer crusher to shoot a frozen projectile, the effluvium bow that shoots two arrows, and the frost flare, which grants frost burn on attacks. I got to building well, yeah, it should be expected by now. Using the wood wand and the leaf wand, I began working on a tree and placing decorations all around the base. It's tradition at this point. On day 78, I made another small tree. The area around the base was feeling a bit more alive in my opinion. This will be the biggest tree I've ever built, not counting the tree house because that was a house, I think. I spent all the way until day 96 building. I may have built quite a lot. And now I have a massive tree that I don't know what to name. 
It has water coming from it, sort of like it's crying, like uh, like some sort of crying willow or a weeping tree. I'm, I'm sure I'll think of something. Let's finish off the first 100 days by challenging more bosses. I also turned myself into a snowman, funniest thing I've ever seen. I got to work in an arena to fight the aquatic scourge. By the time I finished working on the arena, I had a bunch of turtle shells and I'm not sure where they came from, but I guess I don't have to farm for them anymore. Time to fight the aquatic scourge. That battle was fast. I thought I was doing well, but then I saw my house being really low. But now that I know what to expect, let's try again. The Aquatic Scourge is a massive acid worm that stopped me from exploring the Sulfuric Sea before. It mostly just shoots a bunch of homing projectiles and releases clouds that make for a huge inconvenience around the arena. I didn't really experience much more other than a bullet hell. And now, the acid rain begins, and with new, stronger enemies. From the Iconic Scourge, I got a bow, some pants, an accessory called the Arrow Stone, and the Aquatic Emblem, which helps with Abyss exploration, which I really hope I don't have to go back into. The Aquatic Scourge does buff my wall fetch stat, so I might keep that around. And since I had gotten a pirate map, I decided to fight the pirate invasion. It's like the goblin invasion, but with stinky pirates. Well, that was fairly easy. On day 97, I made my way to hell, into a new biome, the Brimstone Crag, and got to killing enemies for the essence of chaos they drop. Afterwards, I used them to create the charred idol. And after spending all day collecting the materials to make the flare wing bow, I made my way back. And now, to fight the Brimstone Elemental. Maybe not. To defeat this boss, I was going to need to make my bow better, so I made the magic quiver and Iker arrows. This second time, I did a lot better, but there's still a lot I need to improve upon. Like making sure those brimlings don't reach their max health, like they did in my first try. The upgrade to my Iker arrows really did make a difference though. Well, I know I was supposed to dodge that. First try, I was doing so well, until I got hit by the death ray. And then it went very bad. I still need to learn to dodge that. I spent all of day 99 getting souls and dying, as well as day 100, but I refused to let the first 100 days end without at least trying a few more times. My first fight in day 101, I ran out of healing potions and died. I was doing so well too. After farming for souls for all of day 101, killing mimics and then making even more boss summons on day 102, I challenged a Brimstone Elemental once more. This was my best try, so I'm going to explain how the Brimstone Elemental works. The Brimstone Elemental is some kind of Cyclops lady that flies around, spawning enemies, and then shooting a bunch of projectiles that you have to constantly avoid. The more the battle goes on, the faster she gets, the more projectiles she shoots, and the more I panic. She's also the second worst boss I've had to deal with so far.
I kept trying, but it seemed like I wasn't going to be able to do it until I farmed for more souls, got more potions, and made more summons. And I still don't know how long that might take me. So if you have any advice, please let me know. Calamity has been really fun. Unfortunately, I had no idea what I was doing most of the time. So if you enjoyed, please comment some advice and tips you have. Also, be sure to subscribe for more Terraria content. I'm sorry I didn't do as well in Calamity as I did in Master Mode, but this is my first time ever experiencing a mod like this.